Failing's test is a biochemical test commonly employed to detect the presence of reducing sugars with free aldehyde or ketone functional groups, specifically alpha hydroxy ketones. Reducing sugars include almost all monosaccharides such as galactose, glucose, glyceraldehyde, ribose, xylose, etc., and some disaccharides like lactose and maltose. Reducing sugars have hemiacetal groups containing free anomeric carbons in their structure. These free anomeric carbons can reduce cupric salts to cuprous salts. This is the basic principle behind the Fehling's tests for reducing sugars. Fructose is a ketose monosaccharide and is a non-reducing sugar. However, it also gives a positive Fehling's test because it is an alpha hydroxy ketone and is converted to the aldehyde containing monosaccharides glucose and mannose by the base present in Fehling's reagent. The disaccharides lactose and maltose also belong to the class of reducing sugars because they contain a hemiacetal group whose open chain form contains an aldehyde which thus gives a positive Fehling's test. In most of the disaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides, the monosaccharide units are linked together by glycosidic linkage formed between hydroxyl group of one and anomeric carbon of others. As a result, free anomeric carbons are unavailable to reduce cupric salts and hence these types of carbohydrates are known as non-reducing sugars and therefore impart a negative test with Fehling's reagent. Fehling's solution is thus used to differentiate between water-soluble aldehyde and ketone functional groups and as a general test for monosaccharides, the chemistry involved in Fehling's test for reducing sugars is basically the same as that in the Benedict's test. Fehling's reagent was developed by German chemist Hermann von Fehling in 1849 and contains a mixture of copper sulfate, sodium potassium tartrate, and sodium hydroxide in distilled water, which forms a basic aqueous solution of bis tartrato cuprate complex. This complex is quite unstable and readily decomposes. Therefore, Fehling's reagent comes in two separate solutions, Fehling A, which is a solution of copper sulfate, and Fehling B, which contains a mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium potassium tartrate. The two solutions are mixed in equal amounts just before a test is performed. Sodium hydroxide provides the alkaline conditions which are required for the redox reaction to occur between the reagent and the reducing sugar contained in the test sample. Sodium potassium tartrate acts as chelating agent and complexes with the cubic ions of copper sulfate so that they do not deteriorate to cuprous ions during storage. The reactions that take place in the Fehling's test may be summarized as follows. The copper tartrate complex of Fehling's reagent reacts with a reducing sugar to form a carboxylic acid and a reddish precipitate of copper oxide. Fehling's test can also be performed on non-reducing sugars as well. A solution of the non-reducing sugars such as sucrose is first hydrolyzed with a dilute acid which breaks them down to their constituent monosaccharides containing free reducing sites. Fehling's test is then performed as usual on the hydrolyzed sugar sample to yield positive color reactions. Before the discovery of the much more stable and improved Benedict's reagent by Stanley Rossiter Benedict in the beginning of the 20th century, the Fehling's reagent was the most widely used preliminary biochemical test for glucose in the urine sample of a person suspected of having diabetes mellitus. Glycosuria is the term used when glucose is present in urine. This test is now largely replaced by the Benedict's test in routine clinical tests because of its convenience, stability, and ease of use. To perform the Fehling's test, you'll need the following. Fehling's reagent A and B. Test sample, which may be a sample of urine or a solution of reducing sugar. A test tube. Test tube holder. Water bath. Three pipettes of 1 ml capacity or three graduated droppers. To begin the test, take 1 ml each of failing solution A and B in a test tube. Add three drops of the test sample. Shake the tube to mix the contents. Place the tube in a boiling water bath for a few minutes. The formation of a reddish-brown precipitate confirms the presence of reducing sugar in the test sample. If reducing sugars are absent in the sample, the solution in the test tube will remain a deep blue color. 
Failings tests can also be performed on samples suspected to contain non-reducing sugars as well, such as sucrose. For this test, take 2 ml of the sample in a test tube and add 1 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid. Boil the contents of the tube for about a minute. Allow the test tube to cool down and add some sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate to neutralize the residual acid present in the test tube. Neutralization is achieved when effervescence ceases to occur in the tube. Failing's test is then performed as usual on this hydrolyzed sample which is now supposed to contain reducing monosaccharides. This is all about the failings test for sugars. To watch my video on how to prepare the failings reagents, click on the link in the screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.